I would now like to call upon Merville Moongang Difo, this year's valedictorian, to give the valedictory address. Chancellor Wiener, President and Vice Chancellor Carr, Dr. McCauley, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families and friends, thank you. Thank you for giving me the honor to stand in front of you today and take you down the lanes of the past and the future. No matter where you're not dreaming, it's really happening. Thank you for everything that each and every one of you here is. There are proud graduates today who were tired students yesterday, will be change makers tomorrow and lifetime scholars. Alors qu'il m'échoit l'insigne honneur de m'adresser à vous aujourd'hui au nom de mes collègues diplômés de la promotion 2023, sans vouloir vous alarmer, je vais commencer par vous annoncer qu'on a un petit problème. Yes, I think we've got a problem, a big one. The problem we have is that this graduating class is simply over the top amazing. <laughs> Passionate Concordians coming from different horizons all over the world. We are the epitome of the beauty and strength of diversity. I felt that there could be no better way of starting this address than pausing for a few seconds to acknowledge this huge milestone and take the time to celebrate each and every one of you sitting in this hall. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Félicitations aux diplômés de 2023. These degrees are a testament to a noble struggle. We came, we fought, and we won. <laughs> Presenting these few words today is quite an emotional moment for me, which feels not only like the thrilling culmination of several undergraduate years, but also an opportunity and a voice to tell my story. A story of passion, strength, and resilience. The story of everything that Concordia is to me and the roles that I was privileged to occupy within its formidable community. Concordia, much more than just university, means home to the international student that landed at the Pierre Elliott Trudeau three and a half years ago. Where I come from, not all dreams come true, and time most often sadly deconstructs visions and possibilities. Concordia anchored my dreams, gave me a platform, silenced my doubts, and empowered me to become the scientist and person that I am today. As a student who was to the very least daunted by what university in a foreign place might be, I am a living testament to the primordiality of finding a safe space and having a community that roots for you and encourages, and encourages you to grow and thrive while being your happy place. The Concordia community carried and celebrated me even at my worst times. I am a fervent believer in the dual nature that is inherent to our identities as citizens of the world and members of the communities we belong to. For me who worked almost 20 hours per week throughout my degree, Volunteering and contributing represented an open door, an outlet, and an opportunity to help reduce the gaps of our system and give back. En tant que jeune femme noire qui perçoit son identité comme un outil pour réinventer le monde, j'ai toujours été vivement intéressée par les causes liées à l'éducation, à l'autonomisation des femmes et des minorités visibles et non visibles, ainsi qu'à la santé et à la justice sociale. Ce vif intérêt a fortement marqué mon implication à plusieurs paliers dans la société ici au Québec, au Cameroun, en pays d'origine et à l'échelle internationale. Over 12 research community and volunteer roles here at Concordia and several others with the outside community in three years of undergrad studies. Several awards, recognitions, and even today a medal. But the real, but the real reward is the people. It's always just been about the people. And love was always at the forefront of my, all my implications, especially at times when I felt exhausted or on the point of giving up. There are times when we feel lost, when we're searching for a light. In those times, a good starting point is taking a step back to ourselves and to our fundamental why. The light, a true light, is often more within us than elsewhere. So the next time anyone tells you that you're not good enough, or the next time you're faced with rejection and doubt, remember, you are your own light, and you're shining really bright. We do not have to be great to start or have accomplished great things in life to start giving back. As true as all crucial conversations start by uttering the first word, thousand my journey start with a single step. If I, the awkward little imposter syndrome stricken international student who saw snow for the first time not so long ago, could turn tables around, then you most definitely can do it. In three and a half years, 
well, almost four soon. I achieved this degree, a little bit more than, a, than half of a master's degree, and I am proud to announce that I will be starting a Doctor of Medicine program at the University of Montreal's Medical School next fall. Yes, the same awkward little imposter syndrome stricken international student who saw snow for the first time not so long ago got into the three Quebec Francophone medical schools. My chances were, respect, my chances were less than 1% for all, of, all three of them, given the limited number of seats typically wanted to in the international contingents. But I did it, and guess what? I owe this success to the Concordia community. You do not need to tick all the boxes in order to apply for those jobs or take those opportunities. You are the playwrights and actors of your own destinies. My first full-time job, which I started last January, while being, as I'm still today, full-time master's student, um, is the managerial position. At 23 years old and still as international as this, I didn't think I would be taken, and, but I did get selected out of 33 other candidates. So you see, we need to step into the realization that believing in ourselves, even just a little bit more, can make a whole world of difference. Life is a mystery box. You never know what awaits you, and the most beautiful experiences sometimes come where we least expect them. When I pushed open the doors of the Notre Dame Hospital in 2020 at the peak of the pandemic, I was no nurse or medical personnel, and it'd been barely a few months since I landed. All I wanted to do was to help curb the burnout and staff shortage at the front lines. But how do you make a difference? How do you change the narrative when you feel like you haven't got the skills needed? Maybe you just need to start somewhere, anywhere, and you'll find a way. COVID wars were where people were most needed, and that's where I went. But I have never, never, never felt this much alive than when risking my life every work days for others to sustain years. Working as COVID caregiver meant being privileged to hold patients' hands during the last moments and doing anodyne tasks like changing diapers or carrying the trash. But this made the difference. This whole experience changed my perception of humanity, death, illness, suffering, life, and the role that I could and I had to play in the world. It is exactly 22 hours 42 at my montre. Je ne sais pas pour vous, mais il me semble que c'est le meilleur moment de parler d'avenir. Mes chers amis, et si aujourd'hui était le premier jour du reste de notre vie, le monde est littéralement à nous. Nous sommes les pionniers d'une nouvelle ère. Fort de cette conviction, j'ose déjà dire au monde de se tenir prêt, car la promotion 2023 de Concordia, eh bien, elle va tout casser. Concordia made possible my greatest achievement so far, this degree despite all the setbacks. When the pandemic hit, my dad's business plummeted, my mom was diagnosed with a back condition that periodically hindered her full mobility, and making both ends meet was rough. I remember being on the verge of desperation and reaching out to several offices at Concordia. From long conversations and advice from Dr. Graham Carr to support from several members of the community and the Science College, notably its principal, Dr. Emma Desplan, I could feel alive and heard. This was truly a game changer. To doctors Graham Carr, Louis Scuccia, André Leblanc, Emma Desplan, Wayne Brick, Erin Barker, Xavier Ottenwalder, Marek Majewski, Paul Joyce, and many others that I can't name here, thank you. I owe this degree to all the Concordians who believed and rooted for me, to all who loved me enough to not give me up on my dreams. If I were to give one last piece of advice, it would be that of perseverance. La perseverance is parfois just to sourire. Se sourire à nous-mêmes et à nos reflets angoissés devant le miroir, et ensuite sourire au monde, et ce même quand l'avenir semble incertain. I will be ending this soon, I promise. But I just wish to say one last thing. To all graduates gathered here, or those who couldn't make it today, and to those who started this journey with us and unfortunately couldn't finish it, be it for financial reasons, health, change of plans, or even the regretted Concordians who left us too soon. We hear you, we see you, we celebrate you, and we will always remember. J'aimerais de se faire remercier toutes les personnes qui nous ont accompagnés à chaque bout du chemin et qui ont rendu ce moment possible. Merci à mes parents, ma famille, mon conjoint et à tous les parents et familles présents ici ce soir. Ce succès-ci, on vous le doit et on vous le dédie. It was incommensurably empowering and tremendously uplifting to have been part of a community and adding my mother's tone to the edifice of building a stronger Concordia. I've tried but haven't just been able to leave. I've been coming to speak at open house since year one and will probably shuffle this year again. All this to say, my heart goes out to every single Concordian past, present, future, students, staff, and faculty that goes above and beyond for more pages of the beautiful Concordia story to be written every day. Cheers to us, cheers to our community, and cheers to the future. Merci, thank you, gracias, siete, chitran, thank you.
Thank you, Merve, for your inspiring words to your class of 2023. C'était merveilleux.